Welcome to This Is My Code. I'm here today with Chris Coombs from Datacom. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Tell us a bit about Datacom before we get started, Chris. Sure. So Datacom are a managed service provider and premier partner of AWS. Uh, we do everything from migrations, transformations to serverless uh, architectures. So one of the things we know Datacom is well known for is the ability to help customers retire their technical debt and transform their businesses. Do you have an example of some uh, projects that you've been working on in that space? Sure thing. So uh, we recently worked with a um, department called the Murray Darling Basin Authority. They're up in Canberra and helped them um, transform a part of their application which is written in PHP and pull a bit of their code out and put it behind an API. Well, I always shudder when I hear PHP, so I assume you've pulled it out, put it into Lambda and you've written it in? Node.js. That's a good call, Chris. Um, so how have you done it, Chris? What's the mechanics behind actually doing this transformation? We actually had a lot of help from the Murray Darling Basin Authority. Um, they provided documentation and code excerpt, excerpts, which they were able to provide to us. And um, when we were looking through the code, we found that like 50% of the code was actually validation. Um, and so what we, uh, what we did was we took the, the validation part and we moved that out to API Gateway. How did you do that? What, what were the mechanisms and tools that you used to achieve that? So one of the things that we like to do when we're building and designing APIs is to actually use the console. So we log in, uh, use the AWS console to click through and create uh, an API. So we describe the resources, the methods of an API. And then we'll start modeling the inputs. So we'll describe what data should be sent to the uh, Lambda function at the back end. Um, and so we took the validation code that, that they had in PHP and rewrote those as models uh, for the API. And then when we were finished building the API, we were able to actually export that API um, as an open API specification. Again, just through the console, a couple of clicks, we're able to download that and then move it into CloudFormation. So what sort of output did it give you when you hit that export button? <laughs> so it gives you a, a big JSON blob, which is an open API specification. You get two types. There's the vanilla open API spec specification that you can use to give to clients and consumers of your, of your API. And that really that enables um, fast uh, build times for um, those clients and consumers. But also there's the uh, open API plus, the, the one with the, the magic in it, which is this um, X Amazon API gateway stuff. I love hearing the word magic. Talk us through some of that magic. What we've got here is an excerpt from the CloudFormation template, but also from the Open API specification. And what you can see here down the bottom is just a usual um, Open API specification for describing a model. So this is very this is very standard. So we're saying here that the trade request is an object type, and it must have a transaction type, which must be either buy, sell, or note in this case. Um, but then what we want to do is make sure that when the request comes in via the API that we actually validate against that. So up here, we just add X Amazon API gateway request validator and set the validator, which we described down here. And all we're doing is saying request body true, which means just check the body as it comes through. And that's all it does. So Amazon takes care of the request as it comes, comes through. API gateway parses the request, checks it matches the, uh, matches the object that we specified. And if it's all good, passes it through to Lambda. Fantastic. So you've taken that functionality out of the PHP code. You've moved it into a native serverless um, AWS application or, or infrastructure. How does that interact with the Lambda on the back end? And what are the benefits there? Uh, we found one of the uh, great benefits was that now we only had business logic in the Lambda function. So before we might have had you know, unit tests and test that, uh, integration tests to test that validation. Uh, we don't need to do that anymore. Now we're just testing the business logic uh, behind all of that. It also means our functions run faster um, because they're only doing the business logic checks. Um, and yeah, overall, it's just a lot of a cleaner code base because we're putting the responsibility for um, validation, just like we do with authorization. We also offload that to API Gateway, and it just uh, is part of the the, the native service. So it's a really good example of separation of concerns, I guess, isn't it really? Right. So one of the things I'm really interested in is um, if you're doing this um, validation up front on API Gateway, how does that impact the way the Lambda function actually runs in comparison to their traditional environment? The Lambda function won't actually run at all, like so um, if, if their message is invalid. So uh, API Gateway will respond with a HTTP 400 code uh, instead of the 200 with the message body. So it doesn't even get to the Lambda function, which is great from a security and um, uh, just uh, from a cost perspective. We're not firing off Lambda functions when they're not required. Right, so you're giving the customer some great benefits. Faster Lambda function execution time, which is a lower cost. Um, and you're also helping them to not invoke a Lambda function at all if the inputs are not passing the validation. So some really great advantages there. Um, you've got some CloudFormation here, one of my 
favorite tools. Could you talk about what the benefits are to the customer of actually using CloudFormation? Absolutely, so we love to use CloudFormation and it's great that we can export the, this uh, schema definition from the console and then put it straight into CloudFormation. We then retire the draft that we made and then we just deploy from CloudFormation then on. And that's great because it gives us versioning, of course, because it's infrastructure as code. Uh, and it means that we can deploy the same templates multiple times for all of the different environments. And it's not just the API that's described in CloudFormation, it's Lambda, it's DynamoDB, it's any of the other bits that you need in, in your architecture to support the API, all as code. So lots of repeatability. Absolutely. Lots of scalability. Absolutely. All the great terms we love at AWS. Yep. Chris, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And thanks for watching This Is My Code.